נועם צור שלום. שלום. And welcome to Culture Buzz. Thank you. נועם, for the last year or more, you have been the principal conductor of the Chamber Philharmonic yes. of Frankfurt. Chamber Philharmonic Frankfurt. Thank you very much. My German is not as good as yours. Actually, it's, it, it doesn't exist. Noam, how is it for an Israeli musician, a conductor, to live and work in Germany? I've, I was asked this question many times when I just started in Germany in 2005. And I will give you the same answer now that I gave then, which is I, even though I physically am in Germany, I don't really live there, meaning I have people from all the countries in the orchestras, in the opera ensembles. Um, I had an American singer, a Slovak singer, a Russian singer, a British singer, uh, um, uh, an Argentinian uh, souffleur, and a French director when I went into work and then people asked me, so what's it like living in Germany? So I have no idea. Um, on the other hand, I, like I said, I've been there since 2005, so it's already just natural, it's just where I am. Sounds very cosmopolitan, international. It is, well the music business is, it's, uh, it really is, uh, there, there is no place for any uh, false nationalism. Of course everybody is patriotic, but uh, it's, it's really not, not right-wing nationalism in any way, there's just no possibility in this. Business. And you are visiting Israel now, your home, to conduct uh, Janacek's Yenufa? That's right, Janacek's Yenufa. How is it working with the <coughs> opera, the Israeli opera? It's, it's beautiful to be working at home. It's the first time I work in, in the Israeli opera and uh, it took some time. Um, unfortunately for all sides, it just didn't work out earlier. Um, it's the first time I, I work with them, and it's, it's the, the best possible piece I could, could wish for, for the first impression. I mean, I really love, love this opera. I love all of Janacek's music, and Yenofa was sort of my key into his world. When I was 20, I think, 19 or 20, was the first time I heard the second act of Yenofa, and I immediately fell in love with it. And also, to this day, this is, this is the act that I love most out of the entire opera, even though I think the entire thing is marvelous. So when they said let's let's do Yenufai, there was no possible way I could I could even contemplate saying no. Amazing! I'm always uh, impressed by the interest of uh, Israeli conductors who are doing very well all over the world, you included, in opera. It seems that uh, some of the biggest names are Israelis. <clears throat> With all, all due respect and all, uh, in all humbleness, it's, it's not that the Israelis have taken a hold of the opera world in, in any way. Rather, than, rather it's, it's that good conductors are sought after in both concerts and operas. So when you follow the opera and you see, well, there are so many good conductors and, and many of them are Israelis, Say, oh well, the Israelis are doing all the operas. It's it's not entirely this way, but I can see where this yeah. this conception can stem yeah. from. No, no, I, uh, I I stand corrected, and thank you for this. Uh, Noam, I understand that your orchestra is also touring. Yes. It's not only uh, performing in Germany. If I'm not wrong, you are about to take a South American tour. That's right. Almost an entire month. Can you tell us a bit about it? We will be in Chile, in Brazil and in uh, Argentina. In Argentina only in Buenos Aires unfortunately. But in Brazil and especially in Chile we'll be touring the entire country. Also getting to places where the... Um, I mean of course also in Santiago de Chile, and in Sao Paulo, in Rio, in Teatro del Lago. So all these big international halls will be in Amichai in Buenos Aires. Excellent. Uh, which is of course part of the... Uh, Jewish community center there, yeah. uh, but also just a beautiful, gorgeous hall with, with marvelous acoustics. And, but we will, especially in Chile, we'll be going through really entire, in, through the entire country, which is quite a stretch of coast, 
and little else and going into also smaller cities and in addition to playing concerts both the orchestra members, the leading players, the orchestra as a group and myself will also be giving master classes. Fantastic. So the entire tour is not only a concert tour but it is a concert and educational tour. Wonderful, wonderful. The Chileans are quite uh, fortunate to have you. What about uh, plans to come with your orchestra to Israel one day? We were here just last year. Ah. Yes, we were here in... Uh, How did we miss that? We were here last September. We were, um, the orchestra play was the orchestra in residence at the Abu Ghosh Festival. Excellent. Uh, they played four concerts there, only one of them with me. The others were with uh, three other conductors. With um, I, uh, One was with Afna Ritai, one was uh, Yuval Benozer, one was Michal Chani with their respective choirs and I had the, uh, the honor of, of conducting one concert there with the uh, uh, Makalata Galila Elion of Onzalchi who we have known each other for many years and he said oh, it will be my pleasure if, if I can lend you my choir and we just Excellent. had a beautiful concert with them Wonderful. and after that we did another four concerts in Israel we did one in Jerusalem, we did in, in Tel Aviv and really a nice, nice tour Noam, when it comes to your repertoire or to your favorites, forgive the impression, the expression, what would it be? What, what, what does it contain? I think it's easier to, to say what it doesn't contain. No, I, I love contemporary music. Um, I'm a big champion of contemporary music and music for the 20th century, obviously 21st century. Um, I think it is very important to play this music and not only in special concerts where you do only that because then it, does, it has the opposite effect of what I think is important. When you go to the museum, when you go to the theater, when you, you see new pieces back to back or shoulder to shoulder with the great masterpieces of the history. Going to an art museum is like a conversation with present and, and past masters. Whereas in concerts, it's the most conservative public and the most conservative business of all the arts uh, where you say, well, we only play Beethoven and, and Mozart and Haydn. Mm -hmm. Or the others say, well, we want to break this, so we only play contemporary music, which I is see. also a problem. So I think the, the most interesting thing is to make a mixture of playing Bach Violin Concerto mm -hmm. in the same concert as a Haydn symphony. I see. Uh, playing a premiere of an Israeli piece at the same time you play a premiere of a Slovak piece at the same time you play a Janacek, yeah. read one of the modern classics. Right. So that is important. But basically, what I will say also when people ask me, so you only listen to classical music at home. I hardly listen to music anymore at all at home because I'm surrounded by it all day. So when I sit at home, I, I prefer quiet and, and the book. But uh, during, of course, during vacations or on flights or whatever, I, I prefer only one sort of music, that's good music. And then I don't care who wrote it, it could be jazz, it could be, I mean, I, I love jazz. I, I played a little bit of jazz myself, I, I was no good at it, but I tried. Um, but I love listening to jazz. Uh, will you be here next week for the Tel Aviv Jazz Festival? I will try to drop in, of course, I mean, I'm here until the 28th. So. May I recommend one uh, performance? Gladly by uh, Kobe Israelit. Okay. Check him out on uh, YouTube and uh, well, you'll, you'll see why. He's a, brilliant, he's a brilliant musician. Definitely will. Living in London. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I definitely will. I mean, I love jazz. Um, I have all the Beatles. Uh, unfortunately, not albums in, in the classical sense because I don't have a record player, so I have them on CD. But uh, I, I have them. I love Pink Floyd, Radiohead. So, like I said, it doesn't matter who, who wrote it. It's... There is good music and there is bad music. If it's good music, I like it. If it's bad music, I don't. That's, that's basically my only criteria. Well put, if I may say so. Uh, Noam, when it comes to your plans ahead, can you disclose some of them? What are your inspirations? Who is your... Who has been? Who is your role model when it comes to conducting? It's hard to say. Um, obviously, as a, especially as a beginning artist, as a beginning conducting musician, you have these uh, role models who you aspire to and very quickly you become a bad carbon copy because it's not only the, uh, 
the movements and, and the mannerisms, but it's, it's the whole personality that has to be behind that. And I have gotten to the point where I can honestly say, who are you as an artist? I am me. I am myself, and I try to be honest to myself. Uh, that sounds, I know it sounds extremely arrogant, and it's not meant this way at all. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure it sounds arrogant. To me, at least, it sounds very individual, which I, is perfectly all right. I, I, I really and honestly try to come from a, from a place, not of false modesty, but of sincere humbleness. By saying what I want to do as, as a conductor, and this is something that I have learned from some of my great mentors along the way, starting from Itait al Ghamid Noam Sharif, who were my teachers in Israel, uh, Yorma Panula, who I've had several courses with in, in the world, the great Finnish teacher, mm -hmm. and uh, last but definitely not least, Pierre Boulez, who I had the pleasure oh. of being two years his assistant. Um, it's the conductor is not important. The composer is, and when the conductor can stand there and say, "I'm small. I'm just an enabler. I have to recreate what this genius composer created, what he wrote down on mu on paper, and I get to be the enabler to get this idea, this abstract idea from the score, through the musicians who sit in front of me, who are more important than I am because they are the ones actually doing it. I only have to inspire them to do it." And to get that into the audience and to say, in the end, it wasn't me, it was Mozart. You know, you just said that uh, it might sound arrogant. What you have just said is actually the opposite. It's a very humble approach that, that's why I to said, conducting. Just, just when, when, when you say, well, I myself, I know that, that everybody says, okay, well, get off it. Yeah. What, what do you want to yeah. say? So that's why it yeah. was important to me to, yeah. to explain this. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the most beautiful compliment I can get and, and actually was lucky enough to get a couple of times was at the end of the opera, at the end of the concert, when people come up to me and say, I felt Mozart today, I felt Prokofiev was here in the, in the hall with us. And then I say, you know what? Thank you. Well, that, that's, that, in that case, I did my job properly. Basically, this uh, embodies the nice uh, proverb, music to my ears. Yes, when, when exactly. You, when you hear such a thing, this is uh, yeah, yeah, probably the ultimate compliment. Noam, you are uh, living and working now for quite a few years in Germany. Yes. And you are probably aware of the fact that Germany became a huge attraction uh, to many Israeli musicians, especially from the classical especially world. Especially from the classical world. But what is your them, explanation? All of them are actually in Berlin, which is... I'm, I'm one of the few ones who, who not only isn't there, but never has been there, except okay. for visitations. Okay. I, I never once lived in Berlin, I never went to school there, uh, to university, college, or Hochschule, or whatever you want to call it. Um, what is the attraction? What would be the explanation? What would be your explanation to this? <laughs> It's a marvelous place for musicians. There's just so many chances, so many opportunities, um, both to learn and to work, and to make a decent living out of it. And unfortunately, one of the anecdotes I have about that is when I first moved to Germany. It's an anecdote that doesn't put Israel in a very good light, unfortunately, but it, it answers the question. As long as it's <coughs> the truth, we can live with it. Um, when I first moved to Germany and I was looking for my first apartment in Heidelberg, which was my first job in 2005 um, as principal conductor of the Opera House there, and I was looking for an apartment and went to see this one, went to see that one, and then I found one that was very nice and very close to the theater, and I thought, well, I'd like to take this one. And the owner of the apartment asked me, um, okay, so just so we know that you have a steady income, what is your job? And I said, I'm a conductor, I work here with the Opera House. And I said, well, in that case, I'll send everybody else home because I'm going to give the apartment to you. It will be my honor <laughs> if the conductor of the Opera House will be, will rent the apartment from me because this will, he made a joke out of it, he says, in, in 25 or 30 years, I can put a plague on the door and say that the great conductor used to live here. And, in, and he might be right. And in Israel, when you, when you say that, you say, well, what, what do you do for a living? Say, I conduct it. I say, okay, but what do you do for a living? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Noam, when you are 
performing, when you are running an orchestra, when you are being the glue, uh, not only between the players, but also between them and the composer and the audience, which is a very important role. When you, th when you think about it, what is your origin, your upbringing as an Israeli brings to that? The, the joy and fun of, of uh, not having the same thing happen twice. Of saying, of course, I, I have the plan, that's what you work out in rehearsals. You say, we start from here and we go there and then we do this and then we do that. But I always save a couple of places where I say, and here, surprise me. I want, I want to keep even in the 10th performance and the 20th performance, to keep this live element, this, this um, what Bernstein used to call the sportive element of music. Yes. I want to, to keep that still fresh and say, here is where I let go, here is where I let things happen. And even if it's a place that I didn't plan on it, if something happens, you have to go with that. I think that's a very typical Israeli thing to do, where you say, oh, I mean, the, uh, the Israeli mentality of smochala, yeh besed, it will be okay, just, just yeah, trust you, me. You can count on me. <clears throat> you can count on it me. It will be that's, okay, it will yeah. work out. That's where I start to worry when somebody <laughs> says that to me. But if it is planned that this is the place where we'll do something, and it'll be okay, because everybody knows that this is where they have to pay extra attention, then it's fun. Noam, I would like to thank you very much for taking the time to speak uh, with Culture Buzz and I would like to wish you uh, all the best and all the success in the world. Thank you, it was my absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, Tudarba.